public. We're on live. Hi, this is Cynthia DeLorenzi coming you, to you today from Success in the City TV. And our special guest is Terry Monahan, who is the CEO of Time Triage. Now, you may remember we've interviewed Terry before, and it was at the end of last year. We're talking about beginning of the year. Well, here we are. We're now in August. We are now at you know, coming towards the end of the year. Can you believe it? And it's like, what should you be doing now? Should you be saying, checking in on your goals? Should you be prepping for next year? What should we be doing now? So, Terry, thank you for joining us today. Cynthia, I'm so happy to be with you. It's always fun to talk to you. Well, I always love talking to you. You know that for sure. So, share with us what we should be doing because I think that's really, so should I be looking at what I've accomplished or should I would be saying, okay, I'm done and what's next year? I mean, what, where should we be thinking right now? That's a really a great question, and it's not an either or answer. You know, all the people that I work with, yeah, we're checking our progress. We're looking to see where are we against the goals that we set for ourselves earlier in the year, but we're also always looking at what are the actions that we're taking. You know, we don't take action throughout the year and then everything stops in, at the end of the year and we start fresh. Everything we're doing builds on everything we've done and, you know, continuing to take the actions lets you go into the new year with some momentum. But let's go back to the, you know, where should you be against your goal? This is one of the things that I think causes a lot of stress and anxiety and uh, concern and overwhelm for people, especially if they think, okay, I'm two-thirds of the way through the year. I have a third of the year to go, but I'm not two-thirds of the way towards my goal, and I should be there, right? Right. That's one way we think. We think that it's a very linear progression, that it's just going to go like this throughout the year. How often does it do that? Never. <laughs> exactly. I mean, is success a straight trajectory? Never. It's scrambled Thanks. eggs. It's, it's backwards, it's forwards, it's around in a circle. You're moving upwards, but it's not a direct line. Exactly. And, you know, I always think it's some, depending on what you're working on, you know, it could be a, it could be a pretty steady trend up, but it also could be one of those lines where it looks like nothing, 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 nothing. Wow. Right? Mm hmm And if you, you remember back to that exercise about, you know, if you start with a penny. Right. And you double the penny every uh, every day for 30 days, right? Right. Well, at the end of 20 days, you would have, uh, let's see, $5,242.88. Wow. Okay? That, however, that's at the end of 20 days, okay? 5242.88. If you continue and in 10 more days, you're going to have uh, $5,368,709.12. That's pretty nice. So if you're measuring yourself against a line like this, you're going to be crazed if you're still down here, right? Right. But if you measure yourself against that kind of a curve, which we see pretty often, let's face it, then you are 0.098% of the way towards your goal, and the only thing that's going to stop you from getting there is if you stop doubling your penny. Right. right. Or you stop know, they, taking the action. They say that a lot of times we just stop before we, we get to our destination. And maybe on the other side, and I remember somebody had sent me this, This I, it was a cartoon, you know, showing, you know, somebody who was in a cave digging, digging, digging for diamonds and finally gave up. But if you could see what they didn't see was that just a couple more hits with the, the you know, hammer on the other side with the diamonds. So, so it's like you can, you just got to keep moving forward. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You, you, it's that consistent action that's going to make the difference. And it's, you know, sometimes we approach the action like we're Sisyphus trying to push a rock up a hill. A lot of effort, no results, and everything we do gets undone overnight. But that's not the way it is, really. 
it's we're we're more like you know the ant eating what was that old song um, the ant eating the rubber tree plant right 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 <laughs> yeah I remember that Frank Sinatra saying that exactly but it's the it's the nibbling away or think about the Grand Canyon that was caused by the flow of water over time mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. that's a huge massive hole in the ground caused by the fact that the water never stopped flowing. Mm -hmm. It changed direction, it changed levels, it got wider, it got narrower, but it kept on flowing. And that's the thing. You know, this kind of a curve, the, the this one, that's one of the ones I've been experiencing a bit this year where uh, there's so much preparation and development happening and in the face of the preparation and development you don't always see the same kind of results right right but you have to lay all of that groundwork for what you're gonna do next otherwise you're trying to build something on sand and the first good wave it's gonna topple it right? you know and that's one thing I think I bring to everything I do is it, it sometimes seems like it's continuous very small steps yes and then something comes I mean it, and you don't see it but you just kind of, and I think that the people really driven towards success have that kind of drive every single day seems like it's small bits of effort and maybe some days when like really big efforts right but every day it's just moving towards where you want to go and then it happens and sometimes it's surprising and sometimes yep. it's not maybe it's not exactly what you were going towards maybe it's better maybe not as quite as good but you've you've moved towards something, and I think that's what the human experience should be: always moving towards your goal. Yes, exactly, and that's one of the things that I give people when they're wondering how do they prioritize all the different things that show up for them. One of the questions you can ask yourself is: Is this going to move me closer to my goal? Absolutely. Or is it moving me farther away? Right, right, right. You know, there's a lot of things that are distractions. Let's face it. Absolutely, and one of the things, and, and one of the things I always tell people, you know, because I mentor a lot of young people, and you know, always sharing what its experiences are, you should have an A list, a B list, and C list. A list are the things you have to do where you want to get to where you want to go. Right. B lists are things you really want to do and you should do, but they're not the A list that are clearly defined as towards your goal. And C list is, hey, great, but we'll never get done because if you're only doing your A list, you really don't have time for B and C. Do you find that kind of be a truth? Yes, and I find a lot of people would rather spend time doing B or C because they're almost assured of success. <laughs> almost assured of success. I like well, that. Well, assured of assured. at least the success of getting something off their list. Right. 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 Not assured of the success called reaching their goal. Right. And when you when you really do, as you said, when you're focused on your A list or however you want to call it, every action you take is moving you at least incrementally towards that goal right. right so you are always making progress right right you know, one, one of the other things I do when things are really bothering me like it's on my B list but it's just really nagging at me and I listen to that thing like if I just did this one thing I would get that kind of annoyance out of my head and that sense of bothering me so sometimes I'll say look listen to that one thing get that done so you moved it away so that you don't feel like it's it's hanging on you so that you can go back and focus on the A list. Do you find that to be a helpful tip hint? Yes, it can. It's about as helpful also as just if it's nagging at you mentally, put it on the list. Physically write it on a list. Mm -hmm. Because when it's running around in your head, your brain is going to use up a certain amount of energy trying to resolve the issue. When it's on a piece of paper, your brain doesn't have to keep remembering it. And if it doesn't have to keep remembering it, it doesn't have to keep working on it until it's time to work on it. What what tools or techniques do you have for managing the list? I mean, how do you advise your clients in managing their list? Well, one of the things I have them do, especially when we're starting, is I have them make a list just to do a brain dump. Let's take everything out of your head. I don't care if it's a you want to do it, you should do it, it's trivial, it's important, it's monumental. 
all of it and all of life. Just anything that occurs, like these are things you should be doing or you want to be doing or whatever. Let's just get them out on the list, right? And then we will look at that list and we will start to determine, is this an A? Is, is doing this item going to get you towards your goal? Okay. Is it a B, sort of a nice to do, but it, it's sort of neutral as far as the goal is concerned? And C is, this has nothing to do with your goal at all. It's just there. Um, and then even with the A's, the is this is going to move you towards your goal, there's another question. Are you the one who should be doing it? Mm. Right? Because often there's an awful lot of things that are going to get us towards our goal, but we are not the one who should be doing it. True. Right? Putting out... Uh, for sale signs or open house signs is important to a real estate agent who has an open house scheduled. It's not necessarily what they should be spending their time doing. Right? That would be something you could delegate to someone else. Yes, it moves you towards the goal of publicizing the open house, which moves you towards the goal of you know, generating more listing, more clients for yourself and, and selling that open house. And yes, that moves you towards the goal of whatever your target for the year is. But you, you would be better served making a few phone calls or having some conversations rather than spending an hour and a half running around putting out signs. That makes a lot of sense. So what do you think people should be doing? Let's, let's, there's two things I want to know. What should we be doing now at the end of the year? We're coming down to the last quarter of the year, what should we be doing at this time? Well, really looking at what, what are the goals that you set early in the year, what are the things you're working towards, confronting where are you in relation to what you said you wanted to accomplish. You're only ever one of three places. You're way ahead or ahead, you're right on track, or you're behind. Fourth place probably is goal. What goal? I don't remember making that goal. I never said that, right? Um, so confront where you are and then look to see what is it going to take. This is where you sort of go back to what are the daily actions? What do you need to do? What needs to happen to get you from where you are now to where you want to finish up at the end of the year? Remembering also that any of that action puts you in good position for the coming year because it it builds up some momentum the hardest thing to do is get something started starting from scratch you know what planes use up 65 percent of their fuel just on takeoff right I didn't know that that's interesting yes. it's a little it's because that's the hardest thing they have to do in the entire journey so 65 percent of their fuel roughly is used on takeoff uh, the rest of it is for getting there and some extra. But it takes an enormous amount of energy to get something started, whereas when you have it started and you've gotten yourself into the groove of taking some regular action, then there's a momentum that builds. You move from, it's like, I don't know if you've ever been in the country or ever had to prime a, a pump, a water pump, no, I haven't. But okay, well, I've I've heard it said that you know you have to keep rocking the handle, and there's no water, and you just have to keep rocking the handle to pr to get the water to come up, and usually it's when you're convinced that your arm's going to fall off. You know, before your arm falls off, you're like, okay, there's no water. This must be a dry well. So you stop. But when you keep priming the handle, all of a sudden there's a trickle of water and you keep moving the handle and then all of a sudden there's a gush of water and then it takes much less effort moving that handle on the pump to maintain that gush of water. But if you stop, you got to start all over. You got to start all over again, which is why we find it, you know, you think about what if we have a goal of exercising and we're gung ho the first couple days and then we skip a day it's harder that next day to get out but if you've gotten yourself into the habit of going out every day 
it's easier to keep up going out every day and in fact you miss it right right no I exercise every day and it's part of my like routine I built it in to my routine it's just exactly. every single day exactly and you miss it when you can't do it right yeah you do and it's harder when you were like on vacation or something you come back it's harder to get back on track but once you do you quickly get back into it because they think it's repetitive behavior that's comforting or <laughs> showing right. so, whatever that is so you know those small simple actions it also takes identifying what are the key actions the key activities that will move you forward in your in your business in your goal and for most people you know yes it's a certain amount of sales but you don't have any access to the sales to clients buying things you have access to the initial contact the picking up the phone and talking to somebody so almost all of my clients when they're coming up with a measure for their progress yes we're looking at the end result but you know we can't really get our hands on the end result we can get our hands directly on are they picking up the phone and making their five phone calls today right so you can really track what you're actually doing gets you to where you go so let me ask you now then what do we need to be doing so we've kind of figured out what we should be doing right now got to stop got to look at what we've done where we are and move that towards goals see if additional in initiatives efforts or anything and maybe even define, say, you know something, that was a goal I had, but that's not what I want anymore. Something changed. So does that happen sometimes? Of course. Right. Of course. I think women and always think, oh, it's got to be this way, and you, we have to build in the framework for change. So what do we do now, let's say December? What should we be doing in December, and then what should we be doing in January? Well, it's not even too early. I just took out a uh, two-page that shows me all of 2014. And I started laying out 2014, <laughs> and it's August, right? Right. But this is me. You've met me, so you know I do it. So here's here's a uh, half of it. I don't know how well you can see it. Right. 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 All I did on this page initially is I marked out all of the national holidays, and I've marked in conferences I want to attend, and some other conferences that I'm I'm doing or traveling and vacation and so that I can start thinking what else am I going to be doing what do I want to be creating but you know you see it's the same thing we talked about last November I start with vacation and time off and then put in some travel you know what things that are going to take me out of my office that are multiple day or need a little bit longer planning I will also be planning uh, some of the activities that are, are around some of the things that I want to accomplish next year. It's not too early to think about it. I, I think I mentioned I, I was trained to do my planning where every three months I sit down and I add more detail to the next three months. I sketch in a little bit more detail to the three months after that and I start to draw out what the three months after that is going to look like. So that I'm never starting from scratch. I've got the broad brush, and I'm just adding more detail as I go forward. So, you know, what do you want to do next year? What is it that, what will build on what you've done this year? What are some important things, even if you think of one important thing that you want to do? One of the things they've discovered in neuroscience, just planning for a vacation gives you many of the same benefits as actually taking the vacation. Oh, interesting. Right? Interesting. So just because of the way it activates uh, the neurons in your brain. But like looking at, okay, what are things that you are planning that are very rewarding, either business, personal, whatever? You can start looking forward. I've got uh, one of my nephews is getting married next year, and he and his fiance live in Sydney, Australia, which would be fun. Um, but his, his fiance is from Brazil. So the wedding's going to be in Brazil. I've never been to Brazil. Well, I've never been to Australia either yet, but I've never been to Brazil. We've got a trip planned for Brazil. We're just waiting for the dates. Excellent. So you'll build all of your travel and everything else, and perhaps even speaking while you're there. Exactly. Excellent. I will book things around. That's the same thing. I'm looking at these conferences I'm going to in New Orleans and New York, and 
Orange County to see what could could I build something with business around that. Right, right. Right. If I'm already there, what could I do? But right. you can't it's very difficult to do that if you're always thinking last minute. Absolutely. Absolutely. Forward and thinking. Frank, well, and thinking ahead, this this wedding in Brazil, if we can book our plane tickets nine to twelve months in advance, they'll be about nine hundred dollars. If we right. book them less than that, they'll be about three thousand dollars. Big difference. Big, big difference. difference. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah. But that's that's, that's so really true exciting. With so many things we do. That's that's really has a lot, I think, of really great impact when you really do that. So that's one thing. So how do you go find things like conferences you want to attend every year? How do you even begin to figure that out? Uh, well, they're obviously they're related to the goals that I've set for myself in business. Okay, so if you're looking for conferences you may want to attend for next year, now's the time to start looking. Right. Look for conferences related to the goals you want to achieve right. in your business or look to things related to your profession. Exactly. So you get out and do a Google search. Exactly. And if I'm looking for opportunities to speak next year, I'm also looking at, for example, this year's calendar of conferences I'm aware of, both locally and nationally, and starting to investigate what would be involved in getting myself on the speaker roster, either for a breakout or a main stage, in, in going forward. Because that's not a last-minute thing either. Most most conferences line up their speakers months and months in advance. Right. Which right. means you have to be proactive about that if that's something that you want to be doing. Right. That makes a lot of sense. You've yeah. given us some great advice here, Terry. So, number one, okay, so now's the time to go back and look at where you've been, how close are you to your goals, what do you need to do, maybe reassess the goals you've defined at the beginning of the year. Maybe they're not really impactful or what you desire anymore. Get those off because now you can make more room for other things. Now's the time to start searching around and making your 2014 calendar. Look for conferences, look for vacation, start building around all of those. Look for opportunities to present. Make travel pay for itself by going there on business, which is a great tip. Yeah. And then it's also at the end of the year, start going back and really prepping for the new year and um, maybe we'll have you back on in, in December or January so we can kind of talk about some great more tips for getting yourself organized to to have a powerful impactful 2014. I'd be happy to and I just want to underline one thing the part about reviewing where you are in the year remember you're not necessarily going to be two-thirds of the way towards your goal two-thirds of the way through the year it could be like that compounding example where you're absolutely on track if you're at nine-tenths of a percent right. towards your goal right now. I think that's, that's because awesome. of all the preparatory work involved. So Terry, tell everybody how they can reach you in case they want to work with you and help them get organized for a powerful 2014. Sure. You can reach me by email at Terry, T-E-R-R-Y, at timetriage.com. That's T-I-M-E-T-R-I-A-G-E dot -E com. Or they can call 703-829-5097. Excellent. So if you're looking for somebody to help you get yourself organized, listed, getting processed, getting everything in place, you probably should call Terry. So Terry, thank you so much. It was fun talking to you today. Thank you, Cynthia. I enjoyed it. You have a good one and a great vacation to Brazil. How lucky are you, girl? Well, that's a year from now, so there are a okay. few others between now and then. <laughs> Something to look forward to. I like it. Absolutely. Thank you, Terry. I appreciate it. Thanks. And stand by.